Hello, in this video I want to show you a ridiculously big computer science book. I think this is the biggest computer science book in the entire world. Look how thick that is. It is humongous. This is thicker than the thickest calculus books. It's thicker than Stewart's Calculus. Encyclopedia of Computer Science. What a behemoth of a book. Yeah, so I bought this because someone left a comment in a video and I checked it out and when I got it in the mail, I was completely blown away because I didn't expect such a large, thick book. So let's take a look at this book. It's got all kinds of topics, mathematics for computer science, applications. Just a big, big, thick book. It's got some mathematics. Let's jump to that. Over here, here we have some mathematics. This is uh, Newton's method. Let's take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. So this is something you learn in a Calculus 1 class, and you can use it to approximate the zeros of a function, or rather the x-intercepts on a graph. Here's an example. So say you're trying to approximate uh, this value here, where my pencil is. So what you would do is you make an initial guess, x naught, then you look at the tangent line there at x naught, and you see that's right there. And the tangent line at x naught intersects the x-axis at this new estimate, which we call x sub 1. And then so you look at the tangent line there, and the tangent line at x1 crosses the x-axis at your new estimate, x sub 2. And notice, you're starting at x sub 0. That's your initial estimate. You look at the tangent line. That gives you x1. That's another estimate. You look at the tangent line that gives you x2. So the tangent lines approach the point where it crosses the x-axis. And so this formula here, by the way, you can derive it based off this picture. And it's pretty cool. Anyways, derailed a little bit, but this is a math channel. So I want to start this video by showing you some mathematics that is actually in this book. So, and this is something you learn in Calculus 1, which makes it even cooler. Most people they, I don't, I don't think most people like this. I think this is one of those math topics that a lot of people don't like, but once you understand the idea and you go through the picture and you do the derivation, it really is quite beautiful. And it's, yeah, Newton's algorithm, they call it. Let's just randomly peruse through this book and see what we find. Well, here's something interesting. I love how it has pictures of people. Encyclopedia of Computer Science, John William Motchley. He taught physics at Ursinus College from 1933 to 1941. During this period, he developed an interest in the problem of weather prediction and built an analog computer to do harmonic analysis of weather data. Interesting guy, right? So you see, you find interesting stuff like that in like this in old books. Obviously, we have the internet, so you can Google stuff, but this gives you all the information right there. Physically, it's with you. If you lose power, um, you know, you can still read by candlelight if you need to. So you have it there physically. Look at this. This is interesting. Datamatic 1000 computer installed at Michigan Blue Cross Blue Shield, Detroit. Cyclopedia of Computer Science. What a thick book. What a thick book. Let's go back to the mathematics, see if we can see anything else interesting. It talks about semiconductor memories. I wonder if anyone else actually has this book. If you have this book, um, let me know. Leave a comment. You know, if you've used this book for anything, if you've used it as a reference um, for anything. Just curious. I bought this solely because someone left a comment about it, and I, I forget. I think it was a, a video I made on another computer science book. It might have been, might have been the Knuth books. It might have been the Knuth books. Or maybe the Wizard book. That's a really famous book. I think someone might have left a comment there about this book. Operating systems. I know if you study um, computer science, like in college, you actually take a class called operating systems. I know that because I was a computer science major at some point, but I did not. I did not finish. So computer science is like my hidden, hidden passion. Right? It was my initial. It was what I liked before I. I went into mathematics, so I've always had some just a little bit of a fascination with it. So computer science books to me are really cool. That's why lately I've been, you know, posting more um, computer science book reviews because I collect 
books and nice to collect different stuff. Random number generation. Cool. Oh, what's this? A 24,000 bit read only store chip using a field effect transistor. Technology packaged in a one inch square metalized ceramic substrate. Actual hardware. There's a lot of people. I've actually, I, I, I've known people. Uh, you know, in, in real life, not just on the internet, who, and, and on the internet actually, who work with electronics and, and they build things, like they build, you know, radios and stuff like that. And I think that's really cool. I think that's something that someday uh, I, might, I might dabble in because it's kind of interesting because, you know, it's, it can, a lot of it can be explained with mathematics, but then you have this physical thing, which is nice. Oh, what's this? What is this? A simple example of the use of conditional expressions is to define the absolute value of a number as follows the absolute value of x if x less than zero is negative s x else x yes conditional expressions are used to define functions recursively by writing the definition in the form yeah actually i was watching um the wizard book which is another computer science book it has lectures uh, that are available for free on youtube and their, their lectures are given by the authors. And they're, it's awesome because the intro has a wizard. And it, it kind of reminds me of like the math sorcerer. It just makes it even cooler. And in the first lecture, uh, you know, these people are computer scientists, but they're mathematicians. And so he has uh, an example with absolute value in that first lecture. And uh, he uses Lisp for that lecture, which is kind of cool. But yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it really is mathematics, you know, in some sense. Uh, I don't know enough computer science to, you know, get into like, to say for, for concrete, you know, concretely like, yes, computer science is mathematics, but people have left comments uh, here in the channel. There was a recent one. Someone said, you know, computer science is mathematics. So, and if you look at a lot of the people who contributed to this book and a lot of the people who've written, you know, these classic books on computer science, these people you know, they're mathematicians, right? They're mathematicians. It's almost like, you know, a subfield of math in some sense, but then it it grew into something else, right? And it's ever-changing. Yeah. Big, thick book. I think the hardware stuff is cool. It'd be really cool if I uh, built some stuff with chips and stuff. What's this? What do we have here? We have some properties. Well, Boolean algebra. So if you study... Um, you see this uh, as a math major. In particular, um, when you study abstract algebra and mathematics, um, when you study rings, you study um, Boolean rings. It's a thing. It's called a Boolean ring. And um, so you see this stuff. And this is cool because here you have this math and it's applied to something else besides, you know, what it's used for in mathematics. So kind of kind of nice. Elementary logic. Truth tables, this is something you study as a math major, right? If you're a math major, you take a proof writing class, and uh, truth tables are something you do. Also, if you're a computer science major, you would see this in like a discrete mathematics course, truth tables. Very, very interesting. Here's some examples. Yeah, I have some videos on truth tables here on my channel. Um, quite a few, actually. I think I have a playlist on logic, like on the really basic stuff like this. I do have a playlist. On, on actual logic and it's it's fairly good like it's got decent examples it's got a lot of the important stuff in it and it has like some decent examples a couple easy ones and a couple that are considered a little more complex so and it's i think it's in sequential order and stuff yeah it's pretty cool stuff the encyclopedia of computer science but i'm really curious to see what everyone else thinks about computer science you know is it mathematics you know, is that what you think? Is it math? Um, yeah, I don't know. Really cool book. Anyways, I just wanted to show you a super thick book. <laughs> so perhaps the thickest in the world on computer science. Ridiculous. And I don't know who, I forgot who mentioned the comment. I, I probably should, I probably can search my comments. I probably should do that to find out who it was after I make this video because, yeah, thank you to that person who mentioned this book. I really appreciate it. Whoa, it's heavy. It is heavy. You know what I should do? We should compare it to another book. Just so you see how big this thing is. I'm just going to grab another book. Oh, here, I have Stuart's Calculus here. So I'm going to grab that. I'm back. So here's Stuart's Calculus. You see that? Oh, this is heavy too. This book is really well made too. The pages are, are a little bit 
different in quality. And there we can see the comparison. So you see the Encyclopedia of Computer Science versus Stuart Calculus. This one wins in the thickness category. This one wins. This one's wider, though. This is a wider book. So it's wider. This one's short and thicker. Wow, these books are heavy. I'm just going to set it down over here. Wow. The Encyclopedia. Yeah, so definitely thicker than that. And I think that might be one of my thickest books. Um, I think Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Kryzig. Let me see if I see that within, within uh, hand's reach. No, I don't see it. It's not, not super close to me. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it. So this is also thicker than that. So very, very thick. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And I'll try to find this book. I, I don't know. Uh, if it's inexpensive, it probably is. Uh, I don't think I paid too much for it, so I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for being a subscriber. Take care.